so that okay so the recording has started yeah absolutely i think biniam you your understanding is correct so in part so that's good to hear that everybody understands at least um the element so um yeah so the really a lot more is just this is probably your first last time you tried nft and some people started a smart contract but this is purely a smart contract writing and uh that basically you would understand whatever you didn't understand last time now you would understand from here what really a smart contract is when you understand a smart contract then you understand so when you understand token you understand really the beginning of what made web3 a revolutionary in, in its own and then when you understand smart contract then you really understand everything else right um and therefore and what uh, we have tried for this one especially dedicated was uh Rehmet. Rehmet has been talking uh, because, as you know, Ten Academy, we don't want to give you training uh, or specialization that doesn't have a job prospect. And given our uh, previous trainings, uh, no one, I mean, they, there are some people who partially do Web3, but not as much as uh, machine learning and data engineering uh, part. So therefore, we thought, like, uh, Rehmet went for two weeks uh, while you were doing the the fine tuning part she was interviewing or asking people also and and linkedin just experts in this area talking to people and doing some research on you know what is the job prospect and what needs to be done um and i think she has her own like recommendations that it, of course uh, it's still it slows down the job prospect but a lot of it is still there is a, a high value in the era of ai web3 and it's still the market capitalization is high so there's still something so that's why we continue to do web uh, so this would be your uh, final web 3 project but it has a, a much more component that allows you to understand or in the future to to bring together to marry actually uh web 3 and ai generative ai together so you will be able to, you, will, you will have that understanding and this project in my opinion is really key for that uh, because first it is IoT, it's coupled with IoT. IoT is the Internet of Things, it's sensor based, and it allows you to, to actually also understand. IoT on its own is a revolutionary and it's going to be increasing a lot, especially in the era of robotics, where generative AI and AI in general is leading. Uh, so, so, this, the three components IoT component, Web3 component, and AI component is coming into this project right but the project itself it's a design is exactly as Vinium said it's about you're going to be um uh, developing a, a gps tracker but in a web3 and a blockchain sense that means you know the smart contract rewards people for respecting a certain constrained geographic area and in this case geologics is actually trying to um reward people for delivering you know for following a certain puzzle line as well as delivering on agreed timestamps, right? Or contract means that on some predefined agreement. And that's what the, you know, that's why exactly you need to develop a mobile app, uh, actually whether you use, uh, so there are gonna be tutorials on either using um, React-based like one or uh, Flutter-based. So there, there's gonna be probably two uh, tutorials on that. And you develop a mobile app that basically is uh, the mobile, is sending it has a you know a wallet that sends actually its gps coordinate in a certain timestamp to the blockchain and the blockchain basically reconcile whether you know a person on that agreed time is along the path or on a certain coordinate point um, within a certain time for example delivery would be on uh, as uh, a center a geolocation center which is latitude or latitude, latitude within that for example let's say one kilometer or uh, 200 or 100 meter within that now and at a certain time so at time for example of 2 p.m uh, sometime in utc now or plus or minus 10. so if the person arrives there within that time and in that geographic coordinate of course they receive a token so this would incentivize people and there's not going to be like you know this is going to be purely uh trustless that means everything happens if, if it happens it happens so there's no one who's gonna check and you know there's not gonna be any middle middle um uh, solution so this is what one of the real benefits of 
smart contracts. And you are going to do it in Ethereum, which is one of the biggest um, blockchain. Okay. And there are many, but just the skills you're going to be able to really learn how to deploy Ethereum based smart contracts and learn, you know, uh, how to program in Solidity. Solidity is a programming language of uh, Ethereum uh, uh, virtual machine. And then uh, in the development sense, there is Brownie, and Brownie is a Python based, and Hard Hat uh, is basically a JavaScript node based uh, part. And then test debug smart contracts. And one ma what makes smart contracts, what why it's also very hard for us to our trainees to get employed is that smart contracts really they need to be debugged and they, they you need to have a lot of experience actually to have a security because it's, a, it's partly a security related part so that debugging smart contract in its own is a field um just because a smart contract once it's written it will not be you know you it's like an airplane once you build it and you fly it if it dies you really can't correct it you know it's not it's a very very um particular thing and for that reason smart contracts need to be really error free and they must have a security uh, compliance so for that reason testing and debugging a smart contract is in its own a big concept um so that those those are the ones and i think everything this is not a group work so this is an individual work so you submit everything individually and as usual the rest are um you know it and in the instruction we have, as usual, up to Wednesday, we, you, you have to try some things um, more on also online editors. So the Remix Ethereum IDE is an online editor, so you don't have to set up anything. You just only need to understand, you know, Ethereum codes and uh, run them and test them and all that. So th this is the task one part. The task one part is understanding many things around it. So the key understanding we ask you to develop is, of course, what is Ethereum you know, blockchain inner workings? I will probably continue where I stopped last time uh, uh, when I gave in, in, in Web3. I actually uh, didn't finish, but that part of the blockchain inner workings, by now you have also, when you work with um, Algorand, you probably also had a very good understanding of what a blockchain is, in, in particular in Ethereum. Uh, it's very similar to Algorand in a different way, but it's you should understand. Read about multiple Ethereum networks. So now, by now, you know why th there are many test networks uh, for one blockchain. And that's in this case, you have Gorilla and you know, Sepolia, uh, Rinkby and Robsten. These are common ones in Covan and main nets. So these are different nets. People try to develop certain features of um, the blockchain. And read about the components of the Solidity programming language and smart contracts concepts, especially you have to understand what a design state roles and interactions are and what's allowed and not allowed. For example, smart contracts cannot, uh, they must be called by an individual, you know, by a, a user. They cannot, um, you know, they cannot, it's like the same as um, many concepts by now you have learned. They are basically, you have to start them. You have to send a message to them uh, for them to reply. Uh, and so that's the aspect. And after that, they can do anything. And then at, we also, just so that you can understand a bit better, take at least one course from uh, Crypto Zombies. Uh, it's a free course on Solidity programming, so so that you get actual an understanding and read about how Ethereum virtual machines work. If you know Java and others like you, this is easier for you. But it's just this is um, very. I mean, it's it's very much simple, you know, uh, programming that which you can understand very quickly. And it's a lot more. I think um, you can, as I said, there are you can develop you can program EVM, like the Ethereum virtual machine, either using uh, Python through Brownie or JavaScript and others um, through their own corresponding um, frameworks. And read about smart contracts, smart contract security, best practices and development. So while, so up to this point is, has been almost always, it's giving you the, the idea, but the connection to AI comes to this, you know, you should read about this, Ocean Protocol and Singularity Net. So these are two uh, projects with effort to try to actually combine AI and Web3. So this will help you prepare, you know, for a possible uh, mix of Web3 and generative AI. So this this would be something that I would really like you to understand, reflect, and comment about, and then write your entry report as usual, right? 
So uh, say, so this would be, and then set up smart contract development environment while you are doing up to Wednesday, because it's a, you know, it's a one week project. You should also be setting up, you know, just so that you don't get late by uh, Thursday, set up also your, your environment. So following this reference, for example, set up Brownie, which if you want to develop using Python or heart to heart or Truffle, if you want to uh, develop on Node.js based, um, so that, you know, everything is ready. So this should be easy and then implement. So this reference gives you like a number betting project using Ethereum and deploy it in a local environment. So you then understand how end to end deployment uh, and, uh, you know, setting up environment deployment works. And then also just small, it gives you a flavor of how to do uh, test suits for number betting smart contract and analyze the smart contract using, um, for example, this reference. So task one and task two, you should be able, you should plan to uh, finish by Wednesday, by end of Wednesday, so that you have fully, then you have the rest of the days to build front, uh, front end mobile app and back end smart contract. So basically, uh, if you finish by Wednesday, those you have every understanding you need, so you will be able to um, deliver your, your work. And so the very similar project uh, to this one is the refrigerator transportation smart contract and the number baiting uh, one. So follow those ones and then build a mobile app uh, using um, uh, one of your mobile development framework. So basically this part task three is really entirely, uh, you know, having role, a creator and a device, and then basically assignment. If you have, you know, a front end that, that controls an admin page, that basically assigns which device and then, um, you know, um, then assigns, for example, timestamp or constraints there, and the smart contract basically will be written and and kind of start accessing. But uh, so that part is the uh, task three, and task four is enrich refined by location smart contract with AI assistant. Again, if you can do this, great, um, because it, this might take. If for some of you, this might take a lot of time. It's basically to be able to in your admin page or in your page, you know, to add a chatbot that allows for the chatbot to actually get information from the blockchain and um, and give information. So it's basically a natural language communication as well, allow it that one. And in the future, what's really nice about this is that not only that the smart contract now reads from a GPS, a chatbot can act like a sensor. And so that's a, a kind of a mixture between the two of them, you know, between the AI, generative AI, as well as um, the, uh, Web3. So you will be able to have those those two connections here because uh, chatbots can act like uh, uh, an IoT or a sensor because they receive humans' thoughts and understanding and distill information and send. And so that's task four is a new task that you could try, attempt. And then basically in task five, you will build, test and deploy uh, whatever you write. Uh, using basically, you know, uh, all the, you know, the mobile app, you should deploy it and probably uh, push it to whichever mobile app um, store you have, either Android or any other place, or make it downloadable if you can. So that's end-to-end -end mobile development as well here. Okay. And the tutorials is just now here. And then later, uh, Rehmet will go through and Rehmet has been preparing for this. So you can ask her any questions you don't understand. Uh, she would be able to be, she will be your, you know, primary guide. And then also on tomorrow, there might be, I will continue as well as it's not here. Or I will add the one and as well as also we will ask another person to start um, um, giving you maybe just on the mobile app uh, part, even if the mobile app, building a mobile app, React uh, based mobile D app, um, even if there's gonna be Rehmet on Wednesday, but we hopefully tomorrow there might be also one tutorial using Flutter. Uh, so uh, yeah, like Rehmet will give you on React Native, React Native based mobile app, and that's gonna be new. Um, and and uh, basically with MetaMask, um, uh, so the wallets using MetaMask and others, uh, you will also have one tutorial probably Wednesday will be uh, more on that. Okay, and the deliverables as usual, and trim on Wednesday, you will be able to, you, you will have that. And then, uh, so that basically means like a, a report, a progress report that really shows 
your understanding, your theoretical and, you know, uh, uh, kind of going and reading part, your reading and summarization part and your understanding part as a report, as well as also every other, you know, your GitHub and progress, whatever you are trying to do. And for example, preparing for task two, as we said, the development environment setup, that, that part should be in your, uh, reflected in your GitHub. And then on, on Saturday will be the final as usual. Okay, and then here are some references you might that might help you. Um, so this is good. You could you could try. You know, so this usually we go through some of the tutorials and give you that we think is useful, so you can follow it. Okay, so let me stop there, and um, then let me see if there are questions. Any question? Everything is clear, Melat. Okay, so in the beginning of the presentation, you said like there are three parts to it, which is the IoT, the uh, smart contract, and as well as the uh, the other things. So, uh, AI. Yeah, the AI. So wh where does the IoT come in? The GPS. The GPS is a sensor. Okay. Yeah, so it, once you know how to do it with the GPS, you can add any IoT to, to it. So it's basically the IoT streams it's sensor value to a blockchain right through basically um through the in this case through the, the the phone so because the app through the app the app in the phone would read the the data from the sensor and send it to the blockchain so that that part of iot yeah okay and the ai is basically the chatbots um and reading part as well and then the smart contract is writing the smart contract that basically acts as a backend to integrate all of it. And, okay, so uh, for this, the, for the IoT part, um, if we're using the mobile app with Flutter, um, how how would we know the uh, location of the the device? I mean, are we integrating it with a Google API, or are we going to be accessing the public API of the? No, but I mean, every phone every phone gives you. Right, so the phone reads the the phone. The phone has a, a sensor called GPS. So GPS is a sensor, right? So so you read that sensor. So every, wherever the phone is, the GPS reads that value. So it's it's there are satellites in the GPS, and then the sensor reads based on those satellites. It reads. It has always a value. You're basically reading it within the phone. So the app will have yeah will basically read from the sensor all right thank you yeah oh. uh, alexander alexander okay if you are speaking we can't hear you alexander okay okay sorry yeah uh, okay can i hear yeah i can hear you. you hear me yes okay uh in my view the project is uh so much huge it requires mobile app uh the back in the part is uh much more uh that is the assistant the yeah so you, you should not too much worry about the assistant in a way we added it in case someone can just quickly learn and do it but i i agree the ai assistant by itself is a, a, a full project so it's just there to help you whatever you understand to give you an idea but even if you don't do uh, task four which is the ai assistant it's fine okay okay so we focus on uh, much focus on the mobile uh, side in yes. the smart the smart side. contract in the mobile exactly okay okay uh yeah. thank you so the, the data source uh, is come from the gps data yes so the gps sensor yeah the gps sensor gives and then the smart contract you know for every person of course you might you might change the variables so you learn how you update the variables so that means you know you set up for every person you you know like if you think of it as a normal function then it's basically you know in you set the partial so when you link a device to the smart contract 
so that now the smart contract can monitor, can track or can receive from that device. So that device will have its own Ethereum account. You have to know that. So that device is like mm -hmm. a person. Then it will have its own Ethereum account. So that Ethereum, just like before, when you do Algorand, you had every trainee who can opt in. So the same as now, the device is basically that the trainee part. And the person who sets up, you know, who should opt in to what kind of that's the admin the admin part sets the variables in the smart contract that means for example this person on this geographic coordinate or this person you know uh, on this time so they can set up time components so that means when within a range of time as well as within a range of uh, coordinates so for example gps location this plus or minus you know or in the radius of 100 meters no, so that person is the, the role. So those are the two roles. And the devices then start sending. And when the condition is met, that the device sends its you know a, a value that is it is within a certain coordinate system, then this smart contrast computes uh, with its destiny or uh, kind of goal it needs to achieve. And then if that happens, then it, it issues a token to that person or to the holder of that device. Okay, thank you. So, so what, what is the main difference that we try to implement? And the, Sorry, what is from the, this pro, What is it? Uh, this project in the IoT? Take an example. The IoT uh, is exactly learning how to read sensors, like sensor values. So, IoT, in this case, value. now the IoT can be anything. It can be another thing that is installed somewhere in a, an agriculture in a farm. You know what does the iot do then you the iot sends a signal that's it like basically iot means sensors right the sensor sends something and sends the signal either via bluetooth or via wi-fi or via an embedded system it sends so it has no difference in this case we use gps so that it's easier generalizing okay. this okay generalizing this to any sensor is very similar normal Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Good. Uh, Abdul Hamid. So I have a question regarding the connection between the mobile app and the smart contracts. Is there going to be a backend? Uh, like, would the mobile app be communicating with the backend, and the backend would then send the request to the smart contracts, or is it going to be direct uh, correlation or a direct? Uh, it can. It can send direct. Like because it's a mobile app, right? So the mobile app can directly send to its value to the smart contract. So uh, there, there, there won't be any backend necessary, right? In in this case, no, not for the not for the mobile app, but for the um, for the admin, you might need you might need to build a backend that basically allows you know a person would come and then you install it. They you know they install. You know they they have an account an ethereum account so this person is the employer you know the employee sorry the employee will have a phone and then they have an account and then basically that account is within within that you know within that device right so that means like they have a wallet that allows them to send directly through that mobile app to the smart contract and and then they give you their ethereum address and then the admin will add their Ethereum address in and you know with a certain condition. And that updates like the you know that updates, for example, the um, a smart contract, you know, for when it's basically a conditional, right? If this is this wallet address, then their condition is this one. So the first time they, they set the variable, it's called a global level variable. So you will learn on that variable states that you can set um a, a different you know for different conditions you set different values so there will be an admin that will be uh, interacting with the smart contract as well yes so, setting global variables exactly it will yeah. set some variables yeah yeah but where does the backend come here the backend is to help this right so the, through the front end you know the same as you build a mobile app for the user the yeah. backend is for the admin and if you want to do all of that in a mobile app, you can do it as well. Oh. 
So, but the, the role of the admin and the user is different. The user is to send to the smart contract a GPS coordinate values and timestamp, while yeah. for the admin, it is to set variables in the smart contract. All right, all right, thank you. Okay. Good, Nathanael? Uh, okay, so my, my question is uh, specifically on the last deliverable. So I, see, I was assuming that uh, like I successfully developed the app and when yeah. the driver is, yeah, when the driver is testing the, basically when we test that app, uh, so we are fetching the GPS location from, uh, from our phone, right? So like that, yes. for example, like I'm using my phone. Yes. So uh, when I test it, so the long, uh, like when the creator creates this uh, uh, contracts or those conditions to meet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take the latitude and longitude values, right? Yes. So yeah, when you say it, the creator sets uh, a point, let's say, or a set of points, but for now, just a point. So that point could be a location which is on a certain building. Let's call that building, you know, in Ethiopia, in Addis Ababa, let's imagine that one to be a Helzer office, you know, or like in uh, in some Bole one building, you, you go and you know exactly what the GPS is. From Google Map, you can find that. Yeah. And then you specify that location to be the destination, right? And then, yeah. O on that, you would say, if the person is within 100 meter here, then the condition is satisfied. Now, now that value is set as a variable. Now, when a GPS is sending coordinates, you'll always then, the, the smart contract computes the distance and then checks if it is within the 100 meter. If not, then it sets the state to be false. That means the condition is no mate until the time expires. And if the time expires, it's no more receiving or it's no more checking because now the time condition has also expired. So almost always a smart contract is always, you know, ultimately once the smart, the, the computation of any smart contract is to result to either true or false. It's a, a smart contract is a bunch of things that are, after it computes, if it's a computes successfully, then it's true. That means the smart contracts condition has been satisfied. So things will follow up but ultimately it's a true and false operation yeah like i get that point my question is like when we test it so the testing values like as you mentioned it should be an actual i was thinking of for example if i want to test it on a Djibouti port for example yeah so when when i was going to like when if i have to test it with yeah, my you phone can't do that. I have to... yeah you can't do that you have to go there but in principle yeah. you can have a simulator I see. So we should use a simulator. A simulator means the, the one that just sends, yeah, that sends like an app. The app itself can simulate, not read from the GPS itself, but actually it just simulates and, and sends that. And if it sends that, yeah, yeah, you know, then you, yeah, it's simul you, you can simulate anything. I see. Now that was my question. Like, should we use the actual phone's data or? Yeah, for small, for, you know, when you test, you separately test. One is, whether you are reading accurately or not, like the GPS. So that's one test that you can test it at your home or your development area. You know, if you go 100 meter, can it actually detect 100 meter? So that one you can test. Okay. Once then, it, like, that works? Yeah, and once that works, then you test, if I give it now different values as if it's read from a GPS, does the smart contract also compute successfully? And if the two conditions satisfy, then you know for sure the other, you know, the combination, the integration test will work. All right. Okay. 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 Fanuel? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so, the admin part, we were on the link. Does it set the parameter for the smart contract to you now return purpose? I mean, like, yes. let's say the client is let's say in doing the right so the admin has to if you like go from here to here then the smart contract like you will try to calculate where the cover is and you know say true or false based on that yeah so the admin is setting 
there is called a scratch global var you know global parameters in uh, that means the smart contract reads from its space its uh, memory space and as long as you write in that memory space you know what it needs to read for what um, you know for example when it receives you can think of it as a dictionary right so now that dictionary is the key of the dictionary is the the address the uh, ethereum address of the the employee and based on that it reads and then what the admin is setting is just adds a dictionary value with address and then its conditions oh so like checking the distance of the whatever location so that we for want this, to yeah be, so of? you add a dictionary element uh, of a given ethereum address and what its conditions are okay so within a second time being this yes. kind of it's distance, time it's distance. whatever yeah it's this it's that yeah. yeah okay then the you know the time side will go to that assuming that it's going we will go to yeah. that location so and we have read everything that's system. necessary from a dictionary mm -hmm. and the dictionary key is the the wallet address okay so the smart contract and the backend doesn't really connect with each other they just access the dictionary and yeah, you know, I mean, the, back end, the creator sets those dictionaries, right? So that means it's setting, you know, it's in the blockchain. So these variables must sit in the blockchain. Okay. So it's okay. actually editing, making transaction to the blockchain to write, to write this. Okay. Then the smart con I mean, the smart contract can also interact with yeah, this. So, so exactly. Yeah. So there are two that when. So this, in this case, when the admin writes, uh, makes transaction, it, the, the admin is not running the, the smart contract. It is setting variables to the smart contract. While the device, it's actually then running the smart contract. It's calling, so it's, it's calling the smart contract. While the, um, the admin is the creator, is actually writing, making transaction. It's not calling the smart contract. It's writing, making transaction to write variables. Oh, okay. I think I think I get it. Okay. Great. Okay. Melat, do you have another question? Uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, Abdulhamid Ab already asked the question, but I didn't really understand it. Uh, so, uh, on the mobile upside, uh, we will be sending data if the with an interval interval of time we'll be sending where the uh, mobile yes. device is located at right so yes. if that's going to be happening how is the communication going to work i mean are, are we going to be building apis or but, but let me you can directly in the mobile app it's a code right yes and that code can have basically use use uh you know it has a wallet it passes you know it, it authenticates first and then sends directly to the smart it calls the smart contract on a certain node so the back end is a blockchain if you want to you can also write it actually as a back you know your own web to back end as as before and then that one can call i mean it's up to you it's a design thing but it can also directly call smart contract because it's a mobile app it's a code itself so yeah you choose i mean so whichever is easy for you you choose you can have an api a web2 api that actually then runs and calls uh, so if you don't want to update if you don't want to update your mobile app every time but you only just want the very simple logic there just that sense and in that case you could yeah maybe that's a good design that you have actually uh, the logic of how to call the web you know the the smart contract is actually then in a backend somewhere, not in the mobile app. Yeah, does that All make right. sense? Okay. Yes, yes. Good. I, I think the questions were very nice. So that means that also you have a better understanding now. I hope that is the case. And I don't know if there are any questions in the, in the, the part. So I think this is good. As I said, if you have any question, and I'll try to get everyone the tutors, but in particular, Rehmet has been, you know, can answer also some fundamental questions like 
how is the job market and all that and she can also answer so uh, yeah great thanks everyone and good luck cheers then academy we can stop the recording